So, okay, so we have we got a lot of people watching. I know there's a bunch of South Carolina folks on here. Um, uh, Easton Nation, we're pumped with us to have Tom Reginas today. He's the head coach at Winthrop University. Uh, let me give you a little bit of rundown on them. Uh, they're from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Tom's been in the game for a long time. 28 years coaching experience. Been at the helm of Winthrop for about 10. He's got 264 wins there. Big South Conference champions in 2014 and 2017. He played collegially at Stetson Powerhouse Program. Uh, when he was a player, three regionals, three conference titles. Team captain his senior year. Uh, coaching from there on out. Moving around, right? So Eastern Kentucky, back to Stenson, and then Clemson. Uh, what a run you had there under Jack Leggett and with him as the associate head coach. Dude, t tell us a little bit about that experience real quick. Oh, my goodness. It's, it, it was an unbelievable experience. But even going back, uh, I've been very fortunate to uh, to work under two Hall of Famers. Uh, you have to you know talk about Pete Dunn also. Pete Dunn's a Hall of Famer. That's right. Um, that was a great experience there. Um, he gave me an opportunity at 24 years old to be his recruiting coordinator and just threw me into it, and we had some good years there and, and did some things and then uh, got an opportunity to um, uh, coach under Coach Leggett at Clemson. Um, other than my dad, uh, I'm not sure there's been another male figure that's been as important to me um, as Jack Leggett. Um, we're still very, very close. We talk all the time. Uh, he's a mentor, but he's a best friend also. Um, you know, you see a lot of uh, Jack Leggett every day in my program at Winthrop. So it's, it was just a unique opportunity for me. Gave me two opportunities to go to the College World Series in 2006 and 2010. Um, was very, very fortunate to spend uh, eight great years there. I mean, you, you touched on a couple of really cool things right there. One, I think that was the last year of Rosenblatt 2010. So you got to go there the last it year did. of that. And yep. two... What I think is so important about, about a coach, period, is the influence that you guys have over the players and helping them for the rest of their lives to be successful. I, I just love that. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that definitely enjoy. And one of the best things that I get out of coaching is when the guys come back to me and they ask for a recommendation. Um, that really hits home hard, right? That, that's, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing more than anything else is that uh, after they're done playing, if it's trying to get them into a graduate school or a med school, um, trying to get them a job, um, that, that means a lot to me. It really does that when, when you start coaching and, and you're able to touch so many kids' lives. Because when you're in it, right, when you're in the season, when you're in those four years, that you, you don't really realize it, right? You're trying to get the best out of them. You're, you're hoping that you're teaching them some – some, some things that can help them out the rest of their life, not only just kind of piggyback what their parents have done, but you're able to help in that process. And I think that's one, one of the reasons why you coach. There's a lot of reasons why you coach, but that's yeah. one of them. It's awesome. I mean, and it, you know, hey, there's wins and losses in that loss column, and that's the business. But you're also yeah. in the business of, you know, building, you know, taking kids and turning them into men, responsible right. adults. It's, it's good stuff. It is. You just, you just treat the kids right, right? You want to be good people. And that is as simple as that. You want them to make good decisions every single day uh, and, and become really good people. Cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit about Winthrop baseball and about this season. So, okay. So you guys, you guys were having a great season. You were sitting at 11 and four um, before, you know, this thing got shut down. So how do you as a coach, I guess, prepare your players and motivate them to continue getting better while they're kind of sitting at home waiting for whatever is the next thing. Yeah. Well, I, th I think it, we're in a unique situation, right? There's no doubt about it. what we've gone through the last three months, four months. I think I, I think we've been uh, at home for almost two months now. You know, it was yeah. at uh, March, March 12th date. I believe it was when, when it all came down, we had just uh, on that Wednesday, we had just lost an extra inning game to Clemson, three to two in extra innings, played really well, getting ready going into conference play. Um, so, so how to motivate them? It, it's a great question. And, and right now, because when you motivate, right, your team, you see them every single day, every single day, or right. even your staff, right? You're able to see them every single day. Um, right now, what you're doing, Zoom meetings, right? You're, you're on group me, but you're not having that everyday contact with them. So, Kind of what we what we felt was important, and we've we've kind of um, 
uh, really emphasize this with our guys is that one, they have to be self-sufficient. Right now, they have to learn how to be self-sufficient. They have to be self-reliant, right? They have to have self-organization, right? I think that's really important. And they have to be creative. So that's really, we're, we're kind of giving the onus on them, right? We want them to take ownership of their development right now because the last two months, we haven't had them, right? When, yeah. they're, when they're with us, we're able to see them either six days a week or five days a week, just depending on the time frame that we're in. We're lifting every day. We're practicing every day or individuals. So I think that's really important that what the message that we want to be is that, you know, you got to make sure that you take your development in your own hands, right? And, and, and actually, in our program, we're seeing it. We have some pitchers that what they did, they went out and they built their own plyo wall. So they got plyo walls at their house now instead of coming to yep. the stadium, right? Some of them have built these the makeshift gyms, right, in their garage, so that, that really, really, you know, excites me that the guys are taking to be self-sufficient, right? And even our staff, our staff has to do the same things, right? And we're trying to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, you know, being creative, what we're trying to do, because it's a tough environment right now, right? right. To keep your guys together, to keep your guys um, uh, motivated, both academically and uh, athletically. So I think that's kind of what we're doing. We're putting the onus on them making sure they're taking responsibility for their own development, for their own, for their own career right now. Uh, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's great advice. And I think, you know, most, a lot of D1 guys are self-starters. That's who you're recruiting. And that's, yeah. that leads us into the next thing. Like you are a great recruiter. You're a legendary recruiter. You brought a lot of talent into Clemson and the other places you've been. What is it that you look for in a player? Like if you're looking for guys who are self-starters, what do you look for? Well, it, I've had that question asked quite a bit, and it's and, and, and really that it, it's really hard, right? Because you know the, the when you go out and watch a kid, it's easy to see a radar gun, right? It's easy to see somebody throw harder, you know, hit the ball line drive or hit the ball far. You're, you're trying to look for us is is you want high character guys, right? You want high character guys, and 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 one way that I found over the years that um that that really works is watch the kids. All right, either on the field, at the field, or when you bring them on visits, all right, how they interact with their parents, how they interact with the coaches, how they interact with their siblings, right? Is it a situation where you can see, you know, maybe one of the coaches, you know, he's talking to them, uh, you know, at third baseline or at the plate and they're rolling their eyes or how the, the young man talks to their parents. That, that says a lot to me, right? How, how somebody, how the kids talk, because that gives you an indicator Right? What kind of kid are you getting? Right? Yeah. Because if they're if they're doing it to your parents or you're doing it to your brothers and sisters on, on a visit, they're probably going to do it to you. It's a lack of respect. In, it is. It is. And I think when when you see kids that have respect for your parents, respect for their summer coaches or high school po coaches, to me that's a great indicator of what kind of kid you're getting. Okay, let's roll with this a little bit deeper. So, okay, I wasn't going to ask this. This it's changed the last 10, 15, 20 years, right? We're in yeah. this era of uh, social media and computers and phones and everything like that. How is how is recruiting changed? And I, you know, kids got you got to watch what you do all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what are we doing right now? We're on Instagram. I'm yeah. a 52 year old guy that's been coaching, for, and I'm on Instagram, right? Right. I, I have I have two daughters that are freshmen in college. I have to ask them how to Snapchat, right? I had that conversation with them. Um, a couple years back is that how do you start communicating, right? Heck, you got to do it through Snapchat, right? Right. So it, it's totally changed the game. It, it's a new way it, to stay communicating. It is. It is. I mean, when I started this whole deal, I would have to start, stop at a 7-Eleven and get a payphone, right, to make a recruiting call. Then, then, then I started, even maybe, you may be even too, uh, Brian Young, for this. I had the bag phones. When I first started out, we had the bag cell phones that you'd sit in the car. So that's all changed. Cell phones change. How you communicate with kids. But I think it's good, right? I, I think yeah. we always say you have to have an, a, a, a growth mindset, an open yeah. mindset, right? Absolutely. You got to change. You got to you got to coach to the times, too. Yeah. Right? You got to you know, coach to the, the times. Yeah. The kids are more knowledgeable now. Right now, it's a matter of it. Yeah, I got things that I want to do, but there's new ways of doing things. Right, right. kids are seeing how things are doing on Twitter now. People have different ways to do it, so you got to embrace that. Right, there's so, you, you got to embrace there, yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so there's so much access now, right? So like yesterday, yeah, yeah. you sent me a text of this sweet video that you guys have of 
the, the Winthrop baseball facility. Yeah. Like 20, 25 years ago when I was playing, I didn't even know what schools were outside of my state. Right. Now we can yeah. sit here and you can show kids all over the country your field, your brand of baseball, what you guys do. So the access is cool. I want you to talk about the Winthrop ballpark because that place is amazing. Yeah, well, I, I want to give a, a lot of credit to, to my, my two assistants, uh, Austin Hill and Robbie Monday. They put that stuff together, right? They're, they're young guys, and, and they keep me on the cutting edge of that side. So, so did all that. But that is one of the reasons why I was really interested in uh, the Winthrop job coming from Clemson. Um, you know, over the years, uh, Coach Hudak, the former head coach here, did an unbelievable job of designing this stadium. Um, and, and what we've time done the 10 years that we've been here is, is that we've, we've increased things. We, we've made it better. Um, but the, the ballpark really sets us apart um, facility-wise from uh, we have a player's lounge. We, we have a full locker room. We have a, a smaller weight room that we can use. We have our full-time training facilities. Oh, we just lost him. That was getting really fun. It was getting really fun. So I will tell you guys to sign him out on this thing. You should go look at the Winthrop website and check out their field. They've got an elevator. They've got a couple of suites. They got lights. Their clubhouse is ridiculous. Um, on, on site hitting facility. So for everybody out there, go to the Winthrop website. Tom Reginas is a legend. He's been around a long time. You guys need to go check their website out. Check the school out. We appreciate him for jumping on. I think that was his first Instagram live call ever. So we thank them. We thank Winthrop Baseball for being a partner with Easton. Uh, we're sticking by him and uh, stay safe, stay ready. All right, see you guys.